Hey everyone, welcome back to my RV10 build, a great place uh, to get away from the pandemic enwrapped uh, civil unrest that's going on with uh, two sides of political dumpster fire at the moment, um, where I'm building my Vans RV10 experimental aircraft. We have a lot to do, let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back. So uh, what you just saw there real briefly, very quick montage, was me going through and doing all the rest of the work on these metal brackets that attach the firewall to the rest of the plane. Um, the steel brackets suck to work through if you're not using a good drill bit. If you do, on the other hand, have a really good drill bit, which those that, that 90 degree, those drill bits are amazing. <laughs> Um, they just cut right through here. I'm not kidding. I might do the rest of the plane at 90 degrees. Um, but I did have to cut, you know, like up here I showed, I cut a little channel or a little access, if you will, in the flange of this uh, part. The, the plans specifically say that's okay. I did it again down here so I can get access to yet another hole. Um, you know, that's something that you're going to have to do. And it's not painful to do it when it's on the plane. I mean, it might be Obviously, it would be easier to do before you ever put all you know these parts onto the firewall forward, but it's not a big deal. You can totally do it here. I mean, just Dremel. Um, but then I drilled those holes, came up from the bottom, and had ample access for all the holes on the bottom. There is one, again, same hole on the bottom. It's a little tight, but my drill bit was just long enough that I could just poke through, and we we're good to go. So now uh, I'm finally at the point where I'm basically done with drilling all the holes and matching everything. So now I have to disassemble everything, um, deburr everything, <laughs> and then I'm going to guess I'm going to, I'm thinking I'm probably going to start machine countersinking and or dimpling. Like some of these, like this is thin metal, this will be dimpled, but like this stuff, this is all machine countersunk, machine countersunks, whatnot. So that's the next step that I'm going to be getting to. Okay, so in the background, uh, as I work, um, basically doing exactly what I said I was doing there, uh, disassembling, deburring, uh, countersinking and dimpling, and just, you know, all the stuff, <laughs> uh, I thought I would answer some of the viewer questions that are in my ample backlog of viewer questions. Um, so first of all, the one that I get, <coughs> Excuse me. The one that I get the most is how did I get the hanger? Um, what does hangers cost? Um, what is the process of renting hangers, etc.? Okay, that's a bit of a deep subject in that there's a lot to it, but basically I got lucky. Um, I just happened to know that a fellow like four rows that way on the front row with the million dollar jet and all that stuff in there. Um, super nice guy. He actually had this hanger back here. The person that had the hanger, <clears throat> I don't know if he died or left. I'm not sure. He might have died. Anyway, long story short, that individual vacated the hanger. And so he just had this vac vacant hanger uh, and it had just come vacant. And I said, hey, well, pff, I'll rent it. He goes, well, okay. And that, I mean, literally that was it. Um, I'm not going to go into how much I'm paying because that's going to be different. Like, like if you were to rent a hanger in Timbuktu, it might be, and I'm just gonna make numbers a hundred bucks a month. Whereas if you rent that same exact space in New York or Los Angeles or something like that, it might be a thousand dollars a month. So it's your price you're going to pay is very, very different. Um, the best thing to do is to contact your local airport where you want to get a hanger. You're probably going to have to get on a list. Most, airport hangers are full the instant they they put them on the market um, and you you end up on a list and I've been on this list for five years so uh, this you know I don't own this hanger this is somebody else's hanger that I am renting um, I have thought about making an offer to buy it from him but as I understand it, he's not in the market to sell it so uh, how it works though here and again it may work differently there uh, you this this all this property is technically owned by the county and so when you buy the hanger, you're actually just leasing it from the county for 20 years or whatever. And at the end of that, I think you have to basically buy it again. So it's a, it's a, basically it's a very long-term lease. Uh, so that's how it works here. Uh, your mileage may vary. Do you need a hanger? That's often an, an adjoining question. No, a lot of people build entirely in their garage. Uh, that was not viable for me because my, we have nice cars. My wife was like, no. Um, 
So this is an extra cost that certainly that money would be nice to not have to put into this. But I mean, this is a, a epic amount of space that I really am glad that I have. So I hope that answers your question regarding the hangar. Um, someone else asked the aluminum stock that cost me $150 to ship. Could I have bought it locally? The answer probably is yes. Um, if you make sure that you have the exact correct stuff, um, the thing with aircraft aluminum a lot of times is, is everything is kind of rounded a little and there's a very specific stock of aluminum. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure I had the right thing. And so I went specifically with the Vans uh, shipped thing, even though it was expensive to get it here, just because I wasn't sure I was gonna get the right thing. So could I have got it locally less expensive? Possibly, uh, but I just didn't wanna screw it up. So I went with the more expensive product. And you're gonna find in aviation, uh, everything is more expensive. You know, you might have a bolt that the Home Depot Aviation Department version of that bolt is 50 cents. The certified version of that exact same bolt is $50, right? And it's, it's like, okay, are they the same thing? Maybe, maybe not. And so that certification process is very expensive uh, for reasons. I mean, they make sure it will actually hold up. And it's sort of the same thing here. I didn't know if it was gonna be different or not, and I wanted to make sure I got something that would do the job correctly. Hope that answers that question. Well, apparently, so what you've been watching me doing is countersinking my Longerons, and I guess the countersink bits, these um, caged, bits only have so many countersinks before the little nose pops off you can see this is the number 40 bit and that uh, the little the little ball nose that kind of guides it through the hole i just heard it go schnick and i was like oh and i've still got a whole plane to do so i'm going to jump on uh, the website ye old googles probably aircraft spruce i'm going to guess and get um a couple more of these <laughs> Uh, number 40 is by far what you'll do the most, uh, but it probably wouldn't hurt to get one of these as well. I can't imagine they're going to be very expensive. Um, so, meh, what do you do? I'm going to do that right quick and then see what else I can do until it arrives. I do have a lot of um, dimpling to do. I have a ton of countersinking still to do, but I have a lot of dimpling to do, so I'm trying, going to try not to waste the day and do some dimpling while I'm at it. It's really upsetting. Um, I came out here with the intent of doing eight hours today and I'm literally an hour and a half in. And yeah, damn. Oh well, you know, such is life. So a number of you have reached out to me asking where to get the PDF plans or if I would send you the PDF plans. Um, so when you buy your kit, um, so this is, notification of payment for vans. This is the, the document I got from them way back in 2015, plus um, contract information and whatnot. Make sure there's nothing on here important. There isn't. Um, and they sent with it a light scribed disc with all the plans on it. Um, I'm not gonna give this out. Uh, the reason I don't give this out is twofold. One, it's very dated now, like the plans that you would get today for the fuselage are different than the plans I got in 2015. I mean, you know, every time that comes out with some sort of airworthiness directive or some bulletin or something like that, they update the plans. Uh, two, they're actually making money on this, so I'm not gonna give them away. I don't think they would appreciate that. Um, but you can maybe call them. I don't know if they'll send you the plans or if you can just pay for a copy of the plans. I doubt very seriously someone would buy the plans and then build the plane based on the plans, um, I guess you maybe could, not really, because I don't think the parts, no, I don't think you could now that I think about it, because the parts are not actually well delineated as to exact size and everything. Like, you know, it'll say, go get part number 55, whatever, and then do thing with it, not here is a piece of aluminum to these exact specifications and blah, 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 blah. So I think you would have a very tough time building the plane just from the plans. Um, but I don't know, so I don't want to give it away. So that's where you get it though. When you buy the, the first kit, they will send you the PDF version of the plans that you then can print out or search or read or do whatever. You also get a full 
a paper copy of the plans for each kit. So when you get the fuselage, you get the fuselage plans, and you get a big book, and then the uh, or empennage rather, and then the fuselage, and then the wings, and you just put them all in the book. Um, so you don't actually have to print them out. It's really more handy for, gosh, somewhere in these plans, I know there was reference to thing, and you can pull up the PDF and do a search and find things. So that's really what these are good for. Uh, but that's where you get them, and no, I won't send them to you. All right, guys, I did get the replacement tool part. Uh, it cost $7.95 or something like that. I think that was with shipping, maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, I got the replacement parts. I've been going through in the background and continuing to countersink, deburr, dimple all the skins, etc. I'm going to finish that up here off screen so you guys don't have to watch it um and then i think the next step after that is actually riveting this whole thing together which is just one more step towards assembling the fuselage and the empennage which is the thing that i cannot wait for i'm looking forward to that it's gonna be amazing i can't wait to sit in it make airplane noises anyways guys thank you so very much i really appreciate you guys if you like what i'm doing on this channel hit that like and subscribe button down there and leave a comment down below if there's something that you want to talk about or if you have any questions it really helps with my engagement and the YouTube algorithms. And if you really like what I'm doing on this channel, if you jump over to my Patreon page for just a dollar a month, you guys can help support this. It really helps me. Just think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. I really appreciate you. And finally, if you want to build a Vans aircraft, you can. I can. You can. Trust me. I'm an idiot. If I can do it, you can do it. All you have to do is get online, order one of your kits, RV3, RV10, whatever you want to build. The 12, the new 14 looks really amazing. If you guys use my builder's number when you order your kit, Vans will send me 100 bucks. It's no cost out of your pocket. It's just a thank you from them. Thank you so very much, guys. I'll see you next time.